I, Marco Polo, Venetian explorer and adventurer, have kept this journal for many, many years. Within these pages are maps and accounts of the many journeys that I undertook as a young man. As I reflect on my life, I have accomplished so much. I've travelled to the four corners of Asia and have walked more miles than I care to mention. I have seen sights and wonders in my many years that no one could ever have dreamt of. The magic of the Buddhist monks, strange unearthly creatures, black stones that burn, to name but a few. Strangest of all was a time I encountered four travellers with their strange caravan. Yes, I remember now. Let me tell you of that, the strangest of all adventures. It all started 35 years ago in 1289 on the plain of Pamir. Yes, that's right. The plain of Pamir, the roof of the world. Susan, and the sun's melted the edges and made it look a bit bigger. All right, Doctor. Uh, a little bit out of breath. Oh, that's quite understandable. After all, we're several thousand feet above sea level. Do you know where we are, then, Grandfather? Well, I directed the ship towards us, and it looks as though we've been successful. But what about that? That's well, I can't see anything without my glasses. Anyway, I don't like this place. Then have to excuse me. I've got a lot of work to do first. Then we must leave. Barbara, I wonder. Do you think it could be the Earth? If it were, where do you think we could be? In the Alps? Oh, it could be the Andes. Himalayas. The roof of the world. The roof of the world. I wonder. If only. Huh. Well, the doctor isn't very reliable, you know. Mustn't count on it. We're always in trouble. This news is extraordinary. It follows us everywhere. What's the matter? All the lights in the ship have gone out. The whole circuit has bunched itself to a cinder, and added to that, it affected the water. We haven't got any. Well, the water's no bother, Doctor. I mean, we've got snow, plenty of it. But how about the heating? No, the heating as well. Everything's gone to pot. But that's serious. We could freeze to death. Serious? Are you telling... There's no need for you to tell me that, really. I think I'd better try and find some fuel. Fuel? Now, where on earth do you expect to find fuel here, hmm? Well, I must try, mustn't I? Oh, well, I wish you luck. I'll come with you, Ian. Thank you. Yes, me too. No, Susan, you stay here. You stay with me, Charles. You might be able to help me. Oh, come on, Barbara. We haven't got much time. Well, Susan, go into the ship and fetch me the two hello, will you? Yes. You know what it is. Even if I do find the fort, I don't suppose I should be able to repair it before you get stuck, and then we shall all freeze to death. Wait a minute. I must rest. Come on, Barbara. We haven't found anything yet. We must find something. All right, then. You go on. I'll catch up with you. All right. Oh, it's hopeless. Ian! What 
is it? What's the matter? I, I, there, was, there was an animal or, or something just standing there staring at me. You don't believe me, do you? Well, look at these footprints. Better take you back to the ship. Can you mend it, Grandfather? I have got to make a new one. I'm afraid he's going to mean a new one, dear. And that's going to take me days. Oh, I don't know, really. I'm always in the... Well, Chesterton. Just as you predicted, Doctor. Nothing but snow and ice. Uh, have you found the fault? Yes, yes, yes. But it's going to take such a long time. Time we don't have. Well, the only chance is to try and get down to a lower uh, altitude. And, and uh, you know, before it gets cold and then we... Doctor... There are strange things on the mountain. I saw one of them. What are you talking about now? Well, I only saw a print. Print? What sort of print? Paws? Who's what? To tell you the truth, I thought it was made by a fur boot. Oh, Ian, I, I'm sure it wasn't well, human. If it were, that means they shoved in nearby. <gasps> Quick, up to it. It's our only chance of shelter. Oh, my, yes, 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 yes. Which way did it go? Grandfather. We're travelers, lost on the mountains. Will you give us shelter? Mongols. In these parts live evil spirits who take our likeness to deceive us and then lead us to our deaths. Let us therefore destroy these evil spirits before they destroy us. We're not evil spirits. We are people like yourselves. Destroy them. Stop! <laughs> Put up your swords. Would you have us killed? These are evil spirits. I command you in the name of Kublai Khan. The old man has the mountain sickness. Yes, he has. My caravan is further down the pass. Come. Come on, Doctor. <laughs> Is he, Barbara? I was asking myself the same question. Thank you, my dear. He's not like her, or any of the others. No. He's a European, Susan. And he mentioned Kublai Khan. Kublai Khan? He was a great Mongol leader who conquered all of Asia. European in his service. He was a Venetian and his name... I'm afraid the uh, the liquid is not too warm. But the cold here is so intense it even robs a flame of its heat. Oh, it's excellent nourishment, sir. Mm. The cold can't affect the heat of the flame, sir. The liquid boils at a lower temperature because there's so little air up here. You mean the air is responsible? Well, the lack of it. Just as the lack of it is responsible for the doctor's mountain sickness. Is your name Marco Polo? It is, my lady, and may I ask who you are? Oh, we're, we're travellers, yes. Uh, that's my grandchild, Susan, and that's Miss Wright, and that's Charlton. <laughs> Chesterton, 
Ian Chesterton. My companions are the Lady Ping Cho and the Warlord Tagant. We travel to Shangtu. Shangtu? That's in China, isn't it? China? I do not know this place. Shangtu is in Cathay. Oh, silly of me. Yes, of course, Cathay. Well, you must all be very tired. Ping Cho, you will share your quarters with... Susan. Susan? I will sleep here with the others and Lady... Miss Wright. Miss Wright, you will have mine. Thank you. Thank you. You saved our lives. <clears throat> I'm rather curious to know why you were wandering around the mountainside at night. But questions can wait until morning. Uh, there, there were two young men that I would like to ask. We'll ask them. Uh, what uh, year is this and where are we? Hmm? You do not know? No, oh, that's why I'm asking you. How long have you been traveling? It is 1289, and this is the plain of Pamir, known to those who travel to Cathay as the roof of the world. The roof of the world? 1289. Ah. Are you asleep, Susan? No. Where are you from? That's a very difficult question to answer, Ping Cho. You do not know where your home is. Well, I've had many homes in many places. What about you? I come from Samarkand. My father is government official there. But I thought Mr. Polo said... <laughs> Mr. Marco. That's what we call him in Cafe, Susan. Well, I thought Mr. Marco said that you were going to Shangtu. Are you on holiday? No. Kubla Khan Summer Palace is in Shangtu. I am going there to be married. What? Well, how old are you? I am in my 16th year. Well, so am I. Do you marry at our age in your land? Here it is the custom. Is your fiancé handsome? My what? Your... The man you're going to marry. I have never seen him. What? The marriage has been arranged by my family. I know only two things about him. Well, what are they? He's a very important man. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> and he's 75 years old. <gasps> you should have let me kill them. Why? Because their clothes are different from ours? Because their words are unfamiliar to our ears? No, Tagana. They are travelers. They are evil spirits, sorcerers, magicians. Tomorrow, if we live until then, you may see that I speak the truth. I think the sun's rays will dispel the shadows from your mind, Tagana. Is it what you believe? Listen. The carriage they travel in has no wheels. It just stands there like our warlord's tomb on one end. And another thing, it is not large enough to carry four people. It must be. I say it is not, and yet I saw all four walk from it. Upon my sword, I swear it to you. So, this is your caravan? Yes. The doctor calls it the TARDIS. Where are the wheels? It doesn't have any. Then how does it move? Through the air. Did I not say that they were evil spirits? Are you of the Buddhist faith? No, why? Well, at the Khan's court in Peking, I have seen Buddhist monks make cups of wine fly through the air unaided and offer themselves to the great Khan's lips. I do not understand it, but I have seen it. There is room for all of you inside here, Miss Wright. Yes. And one enters here. It's locked. Where is the key? The doctor has it, and you wouldn't let him come up here. Oh, yes, he has the mounted sickness. Have you the power to make it fly? 
No, only the doctor has that power. Why is it here? It's damaged. What? Um, a part of it is broken. But it could be moved by hand. Oh, yes, if you had sufficient men. Well, we'll make a sledge and take it down the pass. Then we shall see. Pichot! This smells very, very good. What is it? Bean sprout soup, my lord. Ah, hmm. Allow me. <clears throat> oh, it's delicious. My lord, delicious. it's fine. Mm. You know, it's rather surprising to find the daughter of a high government official working as a servant in Marco Polo's caravan. I wish to serve, my lord. Although, among Messer Marco's retinue, there is a man who calls himself a cook. His name wouldn't be Tigana, would it? Oh, no, my lord. The warlord Tugana is a special emissary from the camp of a great Mongol lord called Nogai, who has been at war with Kublai Khan. Yeah, Mongol fighting Mongol. <laughs> the war is over, my lord. Nogai has sued for peace, and Tugana travels to Kublai's court to discuss yeah. the armistice terms. Uh, yes, well, for an emissary of peace, I must say he is of rather bloodthirsty habits, hasn't he? <laughs> I find your caravan most unusual, Doctor. Yes, uh, Mr. Marco, it is different. And in need of repair. That is true. Mm. Mr. Marco has ordered a sledge to be made. He's going to bring the TARDIS down here. You oh, indeed. That's charming of you. Very charming of you. It won't take me very long to repair a day or so, but I assure you that I shall not hold up your journey any longer than is necessary. I'm afraid we can't stay here. One crosses the plain of Pamir as quickly as possible. However, we will be spending a few days at Lop. Lop? Where's that? It's a town on the edge of the Gobi Desert, beyond Kashgar and Yarkand. I see, and you will be taking us along with you, including the TARDIS. Doctor, I once transported an entire army and its equipment from uh, Cathay to India, all without loss. Oh, good, good, that I can work as we proceed, yes. Um, <laughs> no. Why not? Hmm? The Mongol bearers still half believe that you are evil spirits. They also believe that outside your caravan you are harmless. However, should any of you attempt to enter, there would be trouble. Hmm, I see. You saved our lives, Mr. Marco. And the least we can do is to respect your wishes. No one will enter the TARDIS until we reach luck. Good. Success. My plan has worked. The strangers and their unusual caravan accompany me to Lop. Our route takes us across the roof of the world, down to the Kashgar Valley and southeast to Tarkan. Here we join the old Silk Road, along which the commerce and culture of a thousand years has traveled to and from Cathay. I wonder what the strangers' reaction will be when I tell them what I propose to do. My caravan is large, Yang, so I shall need plenty of food and water before venturing out into the Gobi Desert. Accommodation to your liking, Queen Jo. Thank you, Mr. Marco. It is most comfortable. Oh, I think it's fab. Fab? What is that, Susan? Well, it's, um, it means wonderful. It's a word we often use on Earth. Uh, Mr. Marco, uh, these way stations, do you have many of these in Cafe? Yes, the Khan has them dotted at regular intervals throughout his domain. And those who work in his service and wear the Khan's gold seal have the right to demand anything they may require. Provisions, horses, shelter. Hmm. Can we have a look, please? Of course. Doctor. Yes? 
They've set the TARDIS up in the courtyard. Oh, excellent, excellent, sir. You will pardon me. I have a lot of work to do. Wait another. I see it. What does this mean? Please sit down, Doctor. I don't wish to sit down. I want you to call your guards up. Please be seated. No. I beg you to hear me out. But I have work to do. I think perhaps we should listen to him. Come on. Oh. Very well. My home is Venice. I left there with my father and my uncle to come to Cathay in 1271. The journey to Peking took us three and a half years. When I arrived at the Khan's court, I was 21. I was an alert young man, good at languages, and willing to learn. The Khan liked me. No, oh, really? On my 25th birthday, I was given an appointment in the Khan's service. 1277. It was, as you say, 1277. Since then, I have traveled to every corner of his domain and beyond it. Two years ago, my father, my uncle, and I asked the Khan for permission to go home. He refused. I think we had all served him too well. Well, I really don't see what this has to do with my repairing the TARDIS. Doctor, I have not seen my home for 18 years. I want to go back. Well, ask the Khan again. I intend to. This time, I shall offer him a gift so magnificent that he will not be able to refuse me. You mean to give the doctor's caravan to him? Yes. You're mad. You can make another. What, in Pinking or Shangchu? You do me an injustice, Doctor. I will not leave you stranded in Cathay, just as I did not let you die on the mountain. No? You will come with me to Venice and make another one there. Oh, you think so, really? Oh, no. Oh, no. Marco, it's impossible. Surely, for a man who possesses a flying caravan, all things are possible? No. We need special metals, materials, things that don't exist in Venice. I'm afraid you don't understand all the problems involved. And neither do you, young man. Well, travel home by ship. We trade with every port in the world. It may take you longer, but you'll get there eventually. Eventually. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The man's a lunatic. No, Doctor. Oh. Desperate. There are many men who are jealous of the polo influence at court. And the Khan suffers from an affliction for which there is no cure. What's that? Old age. If he dies, I may never see Venice again. Well, that is your problem, not mine. I have just made it yours, Doctor. But you do see Venice again, Marco. I know you do. What makes you so sure that the doctor's caravan is a suitable present? The doctor is the only one who can fly it. I told you about the Buddhist monks. They will discover it, see. <laughs> a caravan that flies, do you imagine what this will mean to the Khan? It will make him the most powerful ruler the world has ever known. Stronger than Hannibal, mightier than Alexander the Great. Marco, you don't understand. I refuse to listen to any more. My mind is made up. Your caravan goes with me to Kublai Khan. <laughs> come on, come and sit down. <laughs> we'll make one event. Grandfather. It's Kublai C, he says. Why are you laughing? He means it. Doctor, he's serious. I, I know he is, yes. What are you going to do? I have the faintest idea. Careful, my lord. One drop will poison an army. I will use it well. On all but the first of Marco Polo's water girds. For tomorrow, the caravan sets out to cross the Gobi Desert. Now you will follow us. And on the third night, I will walk back to you. Then we're going to ride back here to Lop. Wait for two days, and then return to the caravan to collect the thing of magic that will bring the mighty Kubla Khan to his knees.